Today we're going to be talking about styles and you know the game has changed over the years. I mean I remember when I first came out on tour and it's way different now, right? Remember how straight we used to throw it and now everybody hooks it and a lot of big curves and a lot of powerful striking and a lot of high rev rate and ball speed. Well, what we need to do though is figure out what is your style. There's so many different ways to throw a bowling ball. No two people look the same, right? Well, let's take a look at some styles now. Let's say you want to be more of a traditionalist. Look at Bill O'Neill's style. Beautiful swing, uses his thumb, beautiful timing, doesn't rush the foul line, and look at that great balance, and then that release. Notice how his hand kind of flares out. That keeps the elbow in. Just a beautiful, beautiful traditional game right here from Bill O'Neill. Hey folks, remember Mike Miller back in the day? Well, he was the first player to ever win a PBA event without using his thumb. That's right. Now, he didn't use two hands, but he didn't use his thumb either. He also bowled a 300 game on television. And then I failed to mention that Mike Miller was one of the funniest people I've ever met. Last, let's take a look at the two-handers, how much the game has evolved. This two-handed style, no thumb, high power, big speed, a lot of strikes, a lot of pins flying everywhere. Here's Oscu Palerma. Throws it so fast, so hard. I mean, look at the power on that bowling ball. He was the first to kind of introduce the two-handed style to the U.S. Jason Belmonte shattered just about every record in the books the winningest player in major championship history. And who can forget Anthony Simonson? At age 25, he's approaching a million dollars in earnings, and there's not a thing he can't do to a bowling ball, including throwing a backup ball. These players have perfected their styles and they're all different. They all look completely different. You need to find out what your style is. I remember the best piece of advice my coach, the late Don Johnson gave me was know your game. And it may sound simplistic, but knowing your game is vital. Figure out what style you fall into and stick with it. We're going to be talking about maximizing your practice time. Now, the first thing we want to do before we throw one shot is to make sure that we get loose. We want to do some stretching because this is still a sport and you want to get nice and loose and limber before you hit the lanes. Once you're ready to go, take it nice and easy. You don't want to go full speed with that first shot. Work yourself up to speed with multiple shots. And then once you start feeling it where your body feels like it's nice and loose, go ahead and let go. Now, for me personally, when I was practicing, I'd never press the reset button. That made me a good spare shooter. And we all know that spares are important. How many times do we watch a telecast where somebody misses a single pin spare and it ends up costing them the title? So you want to make sure that you shoot every spare. But when I was practicing, what I used to do was I would try to create different shapes. I'd go straight when I wanted to. I would throw that medium curve when I wanted to, and then I would try to slow hook it. But I also knew that I was stronger at one of those shapes than the others, and that's why I still had to practice them. But I knew what my strength was, and that's what you're going to find in your practice session. You are going to find what your strength is, and make sure that you really work hard on that so you know you're at least good at one thing. But it's also important to try to be as versatile as you can. There you have it. Some great information. I know your bowling's gonna get much better really quick. You know the one person that comes to mind when I think about accuracy? Hmm. Yeah, that guy, Norm Duke. So here's the wee Iceman, and look at him just splitting boards. You know, Norm told me a story that when he used to practice, he would put a dime on the second arrow and see if he could roll his bowling ball over that dime. And he said to me he did it nine out of 10 times once, and you could tell because the ball would actually leave the lane surface, like, like hitting a little speed bump. And so Norm was, always comes to mind as being one of the most accurate players in PBA history. All right, let's talk about spare shooting. You know, to be an elite player on the PBA tour, you have to be a great spare shooter. And one of the best spare shooters that comes to my mind is a guy by the name of Pete Weber. You may have heard of him. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Pete Weber make the 36710 
on television. It seems like it seems like every time he left it, he made it. It was like shooting a five pin for Pete. But let's not forget that crucial 10 pin he made at the US Open to win his fifth, to give him a chance. He had to make the 10 pin first. He did that, got up and threw the strike to beat Mike Fagan by one pin. And that's right. Who do you think you are? I am. Who do you think you are? I am. All right, folks, let's talk about ball motion and, and, and what really is ball motion? Well, it's the shape that the ball's creating, right? And we want to try to create the best ball motion for two reasons. One, so that when the ball hits the pocket, all 10 pins go down. And two, creating a little more mistake area at your target. And I think one of the best players over the years that's really good at understanding ball motion is a guy by the name of Chris Barnes. You may have heard of him. He's in the Hall of Fame. Chris Barnes, you know, I call him the professor. He's always calculating, he's always searching. He's always looking for that perfect motion. Yes, he can do a lot of different things with the bowling ball, but he also knows what his strengths are in his game. But understanding ball motion, I'm not sure there's anybody better than Chris Barnes when it comes to this one crucial key to becoming an elite player. All right, folks, another key to becoming an elite player is making adjustments on the fly. That means moving your feet and target to try to get to the pocket more consistently and more often. And I think one of the best ever is, well, we've already talked about him. Let's go back to the Wee Iceman. I can't tell you how many times we watched Norm come off the approach and look at the approach, look at the pins, look at the target, and he starts moving his feet around. He's not even on the approach. And then all of a sudden he gets up on the approach, he looks down at his feet, then you see him move his feet, and he looks up and, and he throws the shot. Norm told me a long time ago, he said, Randy, when you make an adjustment, you have to make it with conviction. You have to be totally committed to that adjustment because if you're not, if there's just the slightest self-doubt, you're not gonna be able to execute. You're not gonna make a good shot. So make the move, trust the move, and execute. There you have it, folks. I think those are the four things that all the elite players on the PBA Tour have in common. You work on those four things, and I promise you too will become an elite player. I've got a, uh, a great group of young men from Weber University, their bowling team, that are gonna help us out with some terminology in the sport that you may or may not know. So why don't we run through some of these, these terms and see if I can't help make better sense of it. Guys? Carry down. Carry down. Carry down is when oil starts moving towards the pins. Generally, we see this happen primarily with plastic and urethane bowling balls because they don't absorb the oil like reactive resin does. So as these urethane balls go down the lane and plastic balls go down the lane, they pull oil with them. What do you got next, guys? Wet dry. Wet dry, that's a good one. That's one of my favorites. Sometimes they call it clift. Back in my day, it was wet dry. That's when the outside part of the lane gets super, super dry and a lot of oil in the middle. What makes it difficult is typically when you get the ball too far to the outside, it overhooks. Too far to the inside, it goes too straight. And sometimes this can be a little tricky uh, in terms of ball reaction. What next, guys? What's a house shot? What's a house shot? Well, the house shot is typically a, a very playable um, condition that most centers, most bowling centers put out for their leagues to give people a chance to have more fun and throw more strikes. Anything else? Wall. Uh, check house shot. Next. Push. Push. Now, a lot of times you'll hear a player throw a shot on the tour and you'll hear them yell push and that means that they typically gotten the ball inside of target and they want it to push farther down the lane so it doesn't go high they're looking for some oil to hold that ball in line back in my day we used to just yell hold or yell something else that i can't really say on camera next shim shim that's a good one i like shim shim is kind of like push because you're looking for that hold, that extra push, that extra shim to hold that ball online and get it to the pocket. Mm -hmm.